Thanks. Okay, thank you. Did, are you finished? I am. Thank you. And I have Tanisha. I don't have a last name. Hi, um, I actually did not have any questions. I just wanted to attend via Zoom. Thank you. Thank you. Trayvon Anderson. Person. Person. Um, hello. Um, hello. Um, hello. Um, hello. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. So, yes, my name is Alicia Alderson, A L I C I A. Last name is Alderson, A L D E R S O N. And the comment I put in the chat is saying basically there is no payment arrangement or payment schedules um, available or affordable for low income. Well, it's only affordable to the low income families. So one, how would they basically pay this 11% increase as well as for the middle class family? How will we be able to have like an, a payment arrangement for this if we fall into those 18% increase or 11% increase of these bills? That's my first comment. And then my second comment that I did not put in here is the educators. We're talking about everybody else is having inflation, but if educators did not get an increase into their cost of living, how are they? they going to afford this bill as well. Is that it? Thank yes, ma'am. Is that it? All these... Thank you. And I believe, is there anybody else that I have not uh, addressed that is signed in virtually to participate? now no i don't see anyone else um okay and uh, no one else in the room expressed any interest so we are concluded as far as the comment section unless um there was somebody else from sir did you want to make any comments okay um again i appreciate everybody's attendance here tonight um Everything that was said was taken down by the court reporter and will be con considered before I issue my order. Remember that written comments may still be filed through August 2nd, 2024. It can be sent either electronically through the public commission's website at www.psc.state.md.us or they can be sent by first class mail to Jamie Bergen, B-E-R-G-I-N, Chief Clerk, Maryland Public Service Commission, 6 St. Paul Street, 16th floor, Baltimore, Maryland, 21202. All comments need to reference case 9738 so that they're placed in the appropriate docket and get to the case. Uh, if you do have questions, the representatives <laughs> of the parties are here to answer those questions. And um, with that, I am going to ask the court reporter to go off the record. Thank you. If you are attending virtually and want to ask questions, I'm going to ask someone from Smetho to um, it depends on the question. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. And that was who who had the question virtually? I'm sorry, I forgot. Oh. I believe there was. The first one was with regard to <clears throat> check. There we go. I think it was the person it was Joseph Evans, but there was a different name. Oh, is is eleven percent the amount per kilowatt hour? <laughs> Eugene, do you want to handle that? Um so the eleven percent is the total bill. It's not a per kilowatt hour uh, change because there's a fixed charge on your bill per month and a kilowatt hour charge. The eleven percent is the total of the total dollar increase on your bill to the total dollar amount of the bill. Okay, and then the next question was, my bill is usually around three hundred dollars per month. The $18 stated is not 11%. Uh, 
I'm a retired nice nurse on fixed income. My income income increase over the years has not come close to 11%. I don't think that's a question. It's more of a comment. Um, again, that was a comment, I believe. Assume the increase of houses being built in Charles County, the increase of charges should be applied to the developers. <laughs> Uh, um, that was from, I believe, Ms. Alderson was asking about low and middle income payment options. Mo! Hi! Is there someone else present that wanted to speak? Hold on, wait. Unmute. Can I unmute everyone? Uh, Miss Lancaster is unmuted. Oh, okay. So, yes, ma'am. She wasn't the one that wanted to speak, though, was she? Not that I'm aware of. No. Yeah. Unmute everyone. Oh. They can unmute themselves if they wanted to participate, correct? Okay. Were there any? Hello, this is okay. So the on. questions that we hello, this is Felicia Newman. Um, okay. the questions that were already stated are going to be reread and answered, or we need to re ask. Re you're going to have questions. To, yes, you're going to have to ask the them over because I I don't have the transcript okay. in front of me. Okay. So the first question you answered about the 11%, the second question is really about um, if there's increased um, homes being built into the area, are, has there been given any consideration around the expenses of the new breakers and the parks that are associated with these new homes being built directly to the developers and or the new the new um, residents that are moving in to, the, um, to Charles County? Do you want to go ahead? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, this is Mark McDougall. Um, when uh, we have a new uh, resident uh, being built in any part of our service territory, uh, there is a, um, a connection charge that uh, we levy against um, every customer through uh, the builder, typically. Uh, and so when the when the buyer buys the home, they will pay that uh, residential extension extension charge and that will cover that will uh, cover the cost of hooking them up. Okay, well, I mean, that's helpful to know that information. Additionally, uh, the question regarding the payment arrangements. Um, we, uh, I don't know if you know, but well, we're fe I'm a federal government employee. I make a decent salary, probably in the middle income range. And it's my bills come in anywhere, 300, 500, 700. It's been up to $1,000 at some time um, with the different, depending on the rates of the, uh, you know, the season or what have you. Um, we don't really provide a lot of payment arrangement options for uh, just regular living wage people. Um, you only really offer arrangements for those who are low income. And so if there are class of people that cannot afford the bills they currently have provided, what other other options are going to be offered for us? You get that? Sure. I, I, I think I got that. Uh, again, Mark McDougall. Um, uh, we offer very liberal payment plans to customers who find themselves in positions where they can ill afford to pay their electric bill. Um, uh, I, I guess my advice, if, if you or anyone you know falls into that category, I would encourage you or them to contact 
our customer care center uh, at Smeco's main number and talk with them about entering into a payment plan uh, that would uh, fit your budget. So uh, I, I hope that answers your question. I don't know, but I, I but I also want to say that there is um, been a lot of discussion about people who have 300, 400 plus dollar bills um, uh, during during the year. Um, the 11 percent increase or the $18 a month that I was talking about is based upon the residential customer using the average number of kilowatt hours every month. Uh, there are a lot of people who use less, a lot of people who use more. And of course, if you use more, your bill would typically be higher. And so the increase that I'm talking about would be more than $18 a month. But the average residential customer uses somewhere in the neighborhood of 1100, 1150 kilowatt hours a month. And that's based, that $18 a month is based upon that usage. You'll also find that during the high heating months of December, January, and February, and the high cooling months of uh, June, July, August, your bill will be much higher. So, I mean, I would, I would expect that your bill for the month of July is going to be much higher than your bill in what I'll call a shoulder month. That is a transitional month, typically in the spring or the fall, when the weather is milder and you use less electricity. So if you're looking at your bill today and, and it's $350, you might look at your bill in October and see that it's $150. I'm just making up numbers. I don't really know what your hat, you know, what your house size is, and I don't know how your insulation is or anything like that. But we're talking averages here. And so everybody, everybody's experience is going to be different. But um, I, I can't address 176,000 customers and their, their individual situation. So we, I'm talking averages. Mark, if um, the person who's speaking- Lynette, will you identify yourself? Sure. Lynette Stark, um, if the person who's speaking has a question about payment arrangements or about a budget, if she would contact me directly, just call the contact center and ask for Lynette Stark, and I will see what I can do to help you out and see what payment arrangements would best fit you. Thank you. Were there any other questions from the uh, virtual participants? Okay. Thank you all for participating. I'm going to end the uh, virtual Zoom link. Thank you.